They took three, and, and you know, with this guy, he's tough. And by the way, he endorsed me. And there's nobody tougher, I would say, Pam, than Sheriff Joe on the border. We don't play games, right? Between the pink outfits and the bologna sandwiches, there's nobody tougher. There's nobody tougher. And they love him. They love him. But here's how it's done. He went in. Nobody reported this story. And when the press talked about these people, they didn't talk. You showed cars, but you almost felt sorry for them, not the people that are waiting for hours and trying to get in. So it's, it's so unfair. So what happens is he arrests three people. And I'm telling you, I made a speech that was like 45 minutes long. All of these people, thousands of people in front of me, not one person even raising their voice. They were gone because they saw the sheriff wasn't messing around. He didn't hurt anybody. He didn't touch anybody. They cut the chains. They moved the cars quickly. Everybody drove in, and it was a beautiful day. But as soon as people saw that there were no games, they said, that's the end of that. Now we go to Tucson, and we had a similar problem but a different mentality in terms of law enforcement. And we had people that were horrible in terms of the protesters or agitators. They were horrible. They were blocking the entrance to the big arena. We had 6,000 people. We had 2,000 people outside trying to get in. They couldn't get in because these protesters are blocking the entrance. They had signs with words that you're not allowed to use. You've told your children, your grandchildren, you can never, ever say the kind of words they had, these big signs up. They had them, as they tried to sneak into the arena, they had them in there. Once we got into the arena, and it was terrible, once we got into the arena, you had to see, you'd see all Trump, 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 and then you'd see the F-bomb, a sign with the F-bomb on it. And then you'd see Trump, 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 there'd be 20 Trumps, and then you'd see a horrible, horrible sign with words so bad. And then what happened is one guy and somebody else, two people together, one's wearing a Ku Klux Klan outfit. And they got him. They said, we've got to walk you out. And they walked him and this other guy who was dragging an American flag along the floor. And they're going upstairs. And they're going through the entrances. And they don't show this. And by the way, at, in the morning, I saw the whole thing. By the time you saw it at 12 o'clock, it was not any longer there. And it's horrible. So they have this guy walk in. And the one is dragging the flag and has no respect for the flag whatsoever, just so you understand. No respect for the flag, no respect for the country whatsoever. And his partner, whoever that may be, has a Ku Klux Klan hat on. And you had an African-American man got incensed, and he started hitting the people, at least the one that I saw. And they put him in, you know, they took him away. And we don't condone violence and all. But they don't say why. Now, we don't condone violence, but why aren't they showing the Klan outfit walking up the stairs? Why aren't they showing that? And you had this, uh, this is a real supporter. This was an African-American man and a family that were there to listen to me speak. They couldn't hear me speak because of the commotion that was being made by a very few people. You know, you talk about First Amendment rights and freedom of speech. You couldn't hear. And now they're walking these two people out. The Klan outfit is still on the one person. And this man became incensed that somebody would wear a Ku Klux Klan outfit and did some swinging, OK? Again, I say it for everybody, especially for the media, we don't condone violence. Why didn't they show that? So in the morning, you saw the Klan, you saw that. By the time, Pam, the evening came, a little, you know, a couple of hours where they could splice and cut. All it showed was this wonderful, I mean, because I, I hear he's a very, very fine guy. This wonderful African-American man swinging, 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 and nobody knows why he did it. And I think it's very, very unfair. Now, I can tell you, if I weren't a Republican and a conservative, other than, you know, Jeb Bush would say, he is not a conservative. But Jeb spent $150 million, and I spent uh, 20 And I'm like landslide here, and he didn't do so well, you know. Who do you want running your country, folks? Who do you want running your country? But, but if that were done, <laughs> thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.
But, but I have to say, if this were Bernie's and if it was reversed, and if something happened, they would be talking about how horrible the protest is. If we went in and protested at Bernie's, or at Hillary's, by the way, because they had their people there. They're carrying signs, and they're, they're machine-made signs, the same signs. They were given by the Bernie Sanders people. They were given by the Hillary people. They're made with the press. They're not homemade signs, other than the really filthy ones, which were, frankly, you know, horrible. But if that were Bernie's event, right, and if we went in, conservative Republicans went in with filthy language, filthy signs, if we stood up and started screaming the F-bomb, okay, they don't report that. They say, Donald Trump's events are violent. Let me tell you, nobody's been hurt at my events. You know, they make it sound so bad. Now, Chicago, we went in, we had 25,000 people coming. We were able to get a lot of them not to come, but we had 25,000 people, and many of them had already come. And if I didn't cancel that one, there could have been a problem. So I got a lot of credit from canceling. Yeah, not credit, not so much from the media, but I got a lot of credit from a lot of people that actually matter much more. Because by canceling, there were no problems. We had no problems. So it was a good thing, but I hate to cancel, but it was a good thing. But we have to understand, today I tweeted out, at Real Donald Trump, I tweeted out, and I said, how come a group of people is allowed to use horrible language, hold up horrendous signs, scream at the top of their voice, close roadways, close an entrance to a facility that I rented, so it's my facility for the day. I mean, they're not supposed to even be in it, okay? How come we're the bad people all the time? Okay, what about the people that are using horrible profanity, horrible words, and closing up highways? Why are they never the bad people? It's an incredible thing. And even the way they covered, they showed the cars blocking the road, but they covered these people like they're wonderful revolutionaries, okay? So we're not treated fairly by the press, I have to tell you, and I think that's one of the reasons that I'm doing so well, because the people get it. The people are really smart. The people are really smart. And they get it. And I want to thank uh, Sheriff Joe and Jan and Jeff and everybody out in, in Arizona, because it was amazing. And we also were in Utah, and we made a stop there. And it was very similar. We actually had a great interior. It was great. There was one person stood up and started screaming, and that was not a person from Utah, believe me. These are people that are placed there. These are people that are placed. So we're going to start following it much differently. We're going to talk much differently. I spoke with today George Stephanopoulos from by phone. Do we love calling in? Is that better, right? <laughs> if you can call in instead of having to go into the studio, isn't that better? Hey, George, how you doing? And it's like, you know, it's terrible, though, the violent. I said, they're violent, and they're not even violent. They stand up, they start screaming, and at some point, some of them have big voices. And when they have the big voice, one guy sounded like Pavarotti. He had a voice that was so incredible. I could make this guy a tremendous opera star. I'm telling you, if I were his manager. I said, you have a fantastic voice. Unfortunately, then he started swinging his fist at people, and they hit him. And you know what happened? We were the bad guys. It's unbelievable. So it, there's very, I just want to explain, there's very, very little violence. But it's very unfair to the people that support the people in this room. The people that support us and us, we're not getting fair treatment because it's not our fault. Remember that, okay? Now, I want to just tell you, when I came out today, I, I see that, uh, President Obama landed beautiful 747. That's very old and spews a lot of stuff. Maybe you should try using another plane. <laughs> because he's worried about the carbon footprint, right? How about a guy who's worried about the carbon footprint? The carbon footprint. And then he says, he gives a speech on the environment. Then he gets in the Boeing 747 with the oldest engines because the planes are very old and they are, you know, not exactly uh, efficient and flies to Hawaii to play golf. <laughs> then he stays there for a hell of a long time. You know, he plays more golf than people that play professionally on the PGA Tour. It's crazy. <laughs> I never saw a guy play golf like that. I never saw a guy play golf like that. He plays a lot of golf, but he gets into a 747, flies to Hawaii, 
And then he flies back a couple of weeks later, maybe a long time, maybe a little longer than a couple of weeks. I'm saying, man! And you know, playing golf is okay, but you should play with people that you want to make deals with, like the heads of countries, Congress, senators that you can't get, right? Congressmen that you can't get. You shouldn't play with your friends. What good does that do? You can do that after you're out of office. You'll play with them for the rest of your life. But play with people. Golf is great. Play with people that can help you get some legislation passed without having to sign executive orders for everything, right? So, I, I found this to be amazing because I'm okay with the Cuba situation, but I want to tell you they should be making a good deal. For instance, I hear Cuba wants to sue us for hundreds of billions of dollars for all the harm we've caused them. That's okay. When you make your deal, you get rid of that, right? You say, okay, we'll do something, but you got to get that clause out, Pam, right, Pam? Pam could draw up about a, a one sentence thing that would solve that problem forever, right? That's part of the deal. They're not doing it. So I can just see it, mark my words, I'm really good at this stuff. What will happen is we'll make the deal. Within a year, we'll be sued for $4 trillion. And we'll have these guys settle for a trillion because they're great negotiators. All you have to do is put a little clause in there that under no circumstances in the future can you sue us for past reparations, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. And it's so easy, folks. It's so sad what's happening. It's so sad. Is that a correct statement? I guarantee you're going to be sued. Watch, watch, watch. I'm so good at this stuff. Watch. Okay? We will be sued for hundreds of billions of dollars because of the horrible treatment that we've given to Cuba and everything else. They're going to sue us for Guantanamo, which, by the way, they want back very badly. They want them back. I want to keep it open, and I'm going to put more in there of the bad ones. But I still don't see how it costs $400 million a year to operate it, you know. We've got, I think, down to 60 or so prisoners. $400 million a year. I'm telling you, I can do it for slightly less. I think I can do it for okay? Slightly less. So, let me just finish by saying something, because it's very important. You, you know pretty much where I am. We're going to build up our military. We're going to make it bigger, stronger, better. It's the cheapest thing we can do. We're going to knock out ISIS. We shouldn't have been in Iraq, but we are. He got us out the wrong way by announcing a date, not leaving some people behind, some troops behind, but all right. So all of that's in the past, but we got to knock out ISIS. They're chopping off heads. They're chopping off the heads of Christians. They're chopping off the heads of anybody that's in front of them. This is like medieval times, so we're going to get rid of ISIS, okay? We're going to knock them out, but we're going to knock them out. We're going to take care of our vets. We're going to take care of our great vets who are being treated horribly, okay? Treated horribly. We're going to get rid of Common Core. We're going to bring education local. It's going to be so much better. So much better. We're going to repeal and replace Obamacare, 100 percent. And Ben doesn't know it yet, but we're getting you involved, okay, Ben? <laughs> We're going to get Ben Carson. Dr. Ben. We're going to get Dr. Ben in charge of that. Tremendous, tremendous problem. And Ben has some great ideas on that, by the way, so that's good. But uh, we're going to get rid of Obamacare. We're going to have something that's so much better, so much less expensive. We're going to save our Second Amendment. I tell you, our Second Amendment is a disaster. It is a disaster. You know, you look at what happened in California with the 14 people that were killed by the two people that became, he became radicalized, right? I mean radicalized, young couple, radicalized. And they go and they kill people that just gave them a baby shower. They had a baby, the people that gave them. They worked with these people. So we're going to take care of it. Uh, Paris, by the way, in the world, just about the toughest gun laws in the world are in Paris and France, right? So they go in, just caught another one today, by the way, which is good, probably be on trial for the next 30 years, <laughs> even in Paris, because in Paris, they sort of have, like, something where it takes a long time, too. But they caught him. That's a good thing. But when those bullets were flying, there was nobody on the other side of the room that had a gun, because you can't have a gun. Only a bad guy, I mean, they were able to carry guns in, right? So they carried big guns in. If a couple of people 
had guns tied around their waist or down at their ankle, so bullets were flying in the opposite direction. You wouldn't have had that problem, folks. You wouldn't have had it anywhere near. 130 people were killed. A hundred and thirty people were killed. hundred and thirty people. And many, many people right now are gravely, gravely wounded, living in the hospital. And frankly, many of them are going to die. And if you had a couple of po folks, I can name a couple of them, like that man right there, put a gun on his shoulder. Nobody, nobody, you're going to be okay. Is that right? Uh, stand up. The honor.